Look at all these hard drives. I'm going to break them down for you and tell you the pros and cons of each kind and when to use them. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery. And today we're going to be looking at these different types of drives, hard drives, storage drives, and finding out what types they are, what they're called, when to use them, and what their pros and cons are. So in some cases it's pretty easy to figure out when to use them because the device that you're putting them in may dictate what type you need to put in. So being able to identify those is going to be important. So let's give you a little run through of what we've got here. So let's start off with these two dinosaurs here. We got some SATA drives here. This is a two and a half inch and a three and a half inch. Same basic premise, they're both SATA interface and they're both spinning drives, so they both have magnetic platters in there and heads and they spin around and it reads the data off of them. They uh, have been the standard for many, many years. Sometimes they're still in use. Sometimes they still have great uses. And as far as any kind of benefit right now, the, the best benefit you have for something like this three and a half inch drive is you can get a whole lot of size, a whole lot of capacity for cheaper than you can on some of these other solid state drives. So what's the, the difference between these two SATA drives and when would you want to use one versus the other? Well, in some cases it's simply just size, right? So here's what would we call laptop SATA drive, two and a half inch, and it's going to be smaller because you want it to fit inside something that's smaller. And this is going to be a three and a half inch, and that's the measurement of the actual size of the case. And you would use a three and a half inch when you want more storage, you know, more bang for the buck, and you, you have the space to put it in. So in a desktop case that may have a slot for two or three of these, then it's not going to make a big difference if you throw those in there. Now what else is the difference between these two? Uh, basically there's going to be a speed difference potentially. How many RPMs? In this case this one is showing 7200 RPMs, and some of these drives may be 42 or 5400. So that's the speed that it can spin and basically the faster that that spin, that disk can spin around, the faster it can find the data that it wants to find or write the data that it wants to write. So generally speaking, the faster the drive, the better for speed. So you can still find 7200 RPM drives in the smaller 2.5 inch, but sometimes they're a little bit more rare. And the faster drive is also going to use more power, so it's going to use up some more of the battery. So if you're using this in a mobile type device like a laptop, then that's one thing to consider also. So sometimes they make them slower just to eat up less battery. Now when I use that term SATA, S-A-T-A, serial A-T-A, that's just the interface between the drive and whatever it is that it's connected to, in most cases a motherboard or a mainboard. And in the case of, of this type of drive, you have a SATA cable that looks like this, and you plug one end into the drive itself, you plug one end into the motherboard, and that's how the data goes back and forth. Now in addition to the data on these, you're going to have to plug in power also. So if we look at this SATA connector here, we've got the power connector on this side. Here's your data connector, which is going to connect to your motherboard. So inside the computer somewhere is a, a power supply that's going to power this. And then in the case of the 2.5 inch drive, it's the same exact connector. You have the, the power connector and the data drive, but since you have such a smaller place to install it, it's usually just a single cable that plugs into both and it's usually like a little ribbon cable that's inside. If you've ever watched any of my upgrade videos then you'll see that little ribbon cable that plugs right into the side here and it carries both the data and the power. Alright, so now that we know the difference between these guys here, let's look at these two right here. So they're both two and a half inch drives. They're both SATA interfaces. If we look at this one, it has the same interface on it. So it's going to connect the same exact way. The only difference is this is a solid state drive and this is going to be again your spinning disk. So it's solid state just means that there's a bunch of memory chips in there, no moving parts, no spinning disks, and those memory chips are going to hold, depending on how many memory chips are in there, it's going to hold a different amount of capacity and that's where everything's going to get stored. Now generally speaking, reading and writing to those memory chips versus reading and writing to a spinning disk is going to be faster. So this drive is in theory faster than this drive. Uh, you have to remember they're both on the same type of bus, so whatever it is that you're connecting it to, if you're taking this out of a laptop and putting this one in, 
then the overall interface, the SATA interface, is going to be the same speed. So that's maybe the bottleneck, but generally speaking, this type of drive is going to be faster. So this type of two and a half inch solid state drive has been a godsend for a lot of aging devices right now, because any of the older laptops, you can just take this guy out, put one of these in. In most cases, it's the same size. It's got the same screw configurations, the same connector on it. And you just take one out, put one in. You can either move the data over or you can just start from scratch. And putting this guy in is going to increase the speed of that device, whether it's a laptop or whatever it is, like a lot. It's going to be very noticeable, especially for your boot time and for launching any type of programs. So for many years now, I've been taking the older MacBook Pros and MacBooks back from 2010, 11, 12, you know, 10 year old laptops, taking these drives out, putting these drives in, and it's almost like a brand new computer. It's, it's night and day speed wise. So these things are getting so cheap now, it's a no brainer. If you got an old laptop or an old MacBook that has a spinning disk in it, now's the time. Take that thing out, put this in, you will, you will see a difference. All right, so let's continue on our our journey through all these different drives here. So now we've got some more different looking drives here, different than the old standard disk drive looking thing that you think of. So now we describe these, sometimes I, I describe it as a stick of bubble gum. And these are, in this case, these two right here are M.2 connector drives. One's gonna be a, a SATA drive and one's gonna be an NVMe or PCI Express drive. So this one right here is an, a, a SATA drive and I already told you that this was SATA, this was SATA, this was SATA. It's the same thing. There's going to be different connectors for the SATA drive. So in this case, it's going to, it's going to slide into a, a slot on your motherboard or a slot in your, in your uh, laptop. But the interface itself, how it talks and delivers the data from the drive to the system is going to be the same. It's going to be over a SATA interface. Now, when we look at this M.2 connector, it's got what they call keys. So you can see in this case, it's got two different keys. Let me go over to the white side here. And the keys are the little missing pins. So that, that dictates what it can plug into. If we look at this other drive here, this NVMe drive, looks exactly the same, but it's only got one key here. So let's talk about these keys and, and learn the difference. So when we're talking about the different keys on these drives, there's a bunch of different configurations I'm going to talk about the, the majority of the type for storage on hard drives, and it all comes down to the M.2 connector. So the M.2 is basically just a, a connector, an interface, a slot to plug into. And you can see here is an M.2 slot, and then on this guy, here's an M.2 slot also. Now we can see a difference of where this key sits, and the key, like I said before, is a little plastic spacer in here to stop something from plugging in unless it's missing pins there. So you can see on this one it's on the left side, this one it's on the right side. So if I look at this guy right here, this is an M key when it's on the right side, it's only going to plug into one of these two. Now you may try to flip it over and plug it in, but I guarantee this will not read this if you do that. So in this case, this, and these are just external enclosures, this is an external enclosure that lets you set up a USB-C, plug it into your computer so you can get some data off of this drive without it being installed inside. So this NVMe drive will plug into this one and then if we look at the SATA one that has the two keys, it'll plug into this type but it'll also plug into this one here with the B key. So this happens to have both an M and a B key and it just depends really on the device that it's going to be talking to this will physically slide in there, but this may or may not be able to recognize a SATA drive. Now sometimes on a motherboard, it'll take either type, so that's why they allow you to plug it in. But sometimes the motherboard will have a dedicated drive just for NVMe, and one that will be a dual purpose NVMe or SATA. So if you have that, let's say on a motherboard on a, on a desktop, you want to make sure that you read the book to find out if you are plugging in a SATA drive into an NVMe slot or into a an M.2 slot, is it going to tie up one of your other SATA channels that may be connected to one of your other drives that are inside there? So read your book before you plug a SATA drive in.
So now that we know the physical differences between the M key and the B key and the M plus B key and what to plug them into, what's the real difference here? Now, if this is a SATA drive, it's going to have a very similar performance, and there's different standards of SATA, but it's going to have a very similar performance to one of these, most closely to, to this one here, because they're both solid state. So depending on the speed of the memory that's built inside to them, and depending on the speed of the interface, they're both going to be very similar. Now, when we get over to this NVMe drive, it's going to be a faster interface bus because it talks to a PCIe bus instead of a SATA bus. So the PCIe bus are generally, if you're looking at a, a desktop computer, all the slots that are in there that you plug your GPU into and you plug different cards into, those are PCIe slots, and they have different uh, speeds, they've got different bus widths. But generally speaking, if you plug something into that, it's going to be much faster talking to your system. So this NVMe drive, generally speaking, would be faster than a SATA drive. Now, are you going to notice the difference between the two? On some things you will. Some things, maybe like the boot speed and, and loading programs and stuff like that, you'll see a difference. But if you're if you're just running Internet Explorer or whatever, you, I guess nobody runs Internet Explorer anymore. If you're just running Chrome, a couple tabs in Chrome, you might not see a big difference between the two. So it may just come down to which drive do you have, which interface do you have, and what is your system capable of. Now when we get down to these last two here, these are both kind of Apple proprietary drives. So these were pulled out of MacBooks or MacBook Airs. And this one, in this case, is an NGFF connector, which is going to be an NGME drive just with a different connector. So you can see the key is in a different place. It's not one of the standards like we showed you with the, the M and the B key. And then this guy here is going to be an MSATA drive. So MSATA, you can probably tell by the name, it's going to be a SATA interface. So this is a little bit older than this one is and it's going to use a SATA interface, so a little bit slower, but still proprietary drive. That doesn't look like either one of these other two standards. So in the case of these guys here, you are going to either have to replace them with another Apple drive. If you want to replace it or upgrade it, you're going to replace it with another proprietary Apple drive, or you're going to have to convert this or this into a format that will use one of these. So if you've watched some of my MacBook upgrade videos in the past, then you'll see I use something like this, which converts this NVMe drive, plug this into here, and then you plug this into the motherboard because that's the same pin configuration of this. So there are ways of taking standard drives and saving yourself a lot of money by buying a standard drive versus a proprietary one and adapting it into the system that you want to go to. So check out those other videos if you've got a MacBook that you want to upgrade and I'll show you all about how to get one of those installed. So this has just been a brief overview on all these different types of drives just to give you an overview of what they are and, and know what to look for if you go to upgrade something or at least to understand some of the terminology I may use in some of the other videos. So hopefully it helped you out a little bit. Leave me a comment uh, down below if you've done this before or if you have any com questions about anything that I said in this. Again, this is just a brief overview, and I'll be happy to help you out in those, in those comments below. I hope you did learn something from this video. If this helped you out a little bit, give me that thumbs up, give me a like on that video, and if this is the kind of information that you like to learn about, then go ahead and subscribe. I'm always putting some tutorials on and upgrades and fixing different types of stuff on this channel, so go ahead and subscribe and check out my other videos. Don't forget to also check out the Family Geekery podcast. That's a podcast that me and my daughters do. We put out new episodes every Tuesday. We cover all kinds of geeky subjects from computers to video games to movies to comic books. So check that out if that's the kind of stuff that you enjoy. Thank you as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.